All right, I'm going to be reading Paper Wishes again. And this time I'm going to be reading the chapter called May. All right. In the last chapter, I always like to look back and reflect on what I read about before. In the last chapter, um, Manami had lost her voice for some reason. It was just, she had lost her voice. And that's actually a question that I want you to consider is why you think she's lost her voice. What does she need to do to get it back? How do you think she might get it back? She had also written some letters to her brothers and sister and had gone to the post office there at the camp to try to send them out, but she couldn't talk. She couldn't tell the man what she needed to do. And so um, she left and she then she thought she heard Eugene and she thought she saw Eugene and she got to the spot where he was, or at least where she thought he was. And she said, I don't understand. I heard Eugene, I saw Eugene, where is he? And then she went to look for her letters that were stuck in her pocket and she lost them. So now we're ready for the chapter May. Mother's seeds have sprouted. The cucumbers and zucchini were first, but the rest followed quickly. Mother added herb seeds too. So now I watch over nine little garden mounds. One good thing about no rain, no weeds either. It takes a lot of work to keep mother's plants alive. By lunchtime, the sun is already so hot that I have to bring them more water so they don't shrivel up and die. Mother checks her garden every morning and every night. The rest of the time she talks to our neighbors and helps Mrs. Soto with her many children. Father works from morning until night. All day long while father's work crew builds barracks, a garbage pile grows. It holds leftover scraps, the things that are too bent or broken or too small for them to use. At the end of the day, the work crew fathers look over the pile and take things that they like. When they are finished, the pile is almost gone. So this isn't a pile of garbage that's like food garbage. This is from their work that they're doing. So they're remember, they're building some other barracks. And so they're, they have leftover scraps of wood, maybe, screws, I don't know, things that you would use when you're building. And then it says at the end of the day, the fathers go to that pile and they look to see what's there and they think, hmm, I wonder what I can use at home. And they take some of those things. Father gives the wood and wire and bent nails he finds to grandfather. Ah, so there are some examples of scraps. Grandfather spends his days sitting by the open door on one of the chairs he made for us from the scraps. He has a frown on his face and wood or wire in his hands, making little trees and animals. Sometimes his eyes are focused on his hand. Sometimes his eyes stare into the distance. I see him watching, waiting. I think, is he looking for Eugene too? Grandfather does not eat in the mess hall with everyone else. Many of the older people do not. After every meal, either mother or I take a plate of food to our room for him. Since father started working, he almost never joins us for mealtimes. By the time his crew is finished for the day, it is so late he usually eats with them. It is also late when he comes home. Father and his friends talk until the sky is black and dotted with stars. One night after father comes home, mother says to him, they need more cooks. Grandfather is already asleep, but I am still awake and sitting with mother. Father does not answer. Manami helps with my garden, so I can take this cooking job, mother says. I don't know, father says, until Manami is better. My neck feels prickly when father and mother talk about me as if I'm not here. I need something to do, mother says. Stuck in this room, I worry. Manami is silent. Father is angry. Ron and Keiko are far away. Maybe if I am busy. Father tugged my braid when mother said my name. It will only be for lunch and dinner, mother says. Her fingers touch father's fingers. Maybe I can make better food than what is served now? Father smiles. I know you can make better food, he says. I see mother and father holding hands. So it is settled. Father will work. Mother will cook. Grandfather will sit. What will 
will I do? Water plants, sit with grandfather, wait for Yuzhin. Kimi knocks on our door the next day. I heard your mother will be working in the mess hall, she says. My mother got a job there too. She's going to sew army nets. I'm sorry, my mother got a job too. She's going to sew army nets at the factory when it opens next month. Kimi comes inside. Hello, Mr. Ishii, she says to grandfather. Grandfather nods. Sit, Kimi says to me. She brushes and braids my hair. Do you want to talk yet? She asks. I want to talk, but I cannot talk. It's okay, Kimi says. Do you hear? They're going to start a school in block seven in some of the barracks. My mother says I have to go. I want to go and I want you to go too, okay? Promise? I nod. Kimi can chatter about a lot of things for a long time. From the corner of my eye, I can see grandfather watching Kimi and me. I think he almost smiles when Kimi's chatter becomes so fast that it is hard to understand her. Kimi is a good friend, grandfather tells me after she leaves. She is happy here. That is true, but Kimi is always happy. Maybe one day you will be happy here too, grandfather says. So I, one of the things I want you to do is think about this person, Kimi. Why has the author included her in the story? How is she a good friend to Minami? Every day the prison village gets more crowded. As father's work crew builds a block of barracks, newcomers fill them up. Bus after bus after bus. So it could have been that her family then, as I'm thinking about this, maybe would have been one of the first people to come. Mm -hmm. And they keep rounding up Japanese from around the country. These newcomers are not like my neighbors from the island. They are from cities, not farms and fishing villages. They are from California, not Washington. And these newcomers don't always get along with my neighbors from the island. There are so many people that I cannot keep track. I know my neighbors in block three, but I don't know these new people in block four or five or 15. Father is happy because there are plans to build a hospital and stores. Mother is happy because there are plans to save an old apple orchard. I think about what Kimi told me, school school will be good. Who then will sit with grandfather? At least our door faces a road and when it is open, grandfather can see and hear people and trucks going one way and then another. But I think grandfather is like me. He isn't paying attention to the trucks and people. He is looking for Yuzhin. He is waiting for Yuzhin. I want you to stop and think about this, about how important Yuzhin is. And is Yuzhin just the dog, or is the author using Yuzhin as a symbol for something else? Is she waiting? What is she waiting for? Yes, she's waiting for her puppy, but what else could she be waiting for? It is late at night and I am supposed to be sleeping, but I am not tired. I open my eyes when someone knocks on our door. Mother says it is impolite to eavesdrop. She says I should shut my ears to the conversation of others, but it is impossible when we are all living together in one room. And on this night, I am glad I do not always do what mother says. The voice I hear is a whisper voice, a familiar voice. It is Ron's voice, Ron calling to us to open the door. Father answers, his voice rumbling low. Mother cries, the, soft, the sound soft and tinkling. Grandfather stands and walks towards the door. I jump from my bed and fling myself into my brother's arms. So if you forgot who Ron was, you know now it's her brother because she flung herself into her brother's arms. I wonder if we will leave the island tonight or if we will wait until the morning. I wonder if we will take the train and then the boat or if we will drive in a car that Ron has brought with him. Before I can stretch my throat to speak, father pulls me from Ron. Why did you come? He demands. 
I had to come, Father, Ron says. What about school? Remember, he's in college. Father demands, I could not stay knowing that you are here, Ron says. This place is a prison, Father says. As long as you stayed in school, you were free. I begin to understand. Ron has not come to save us. He has not come to take us to the island. He has not come to help me find Eugene. I am glad you have come, Mother says. It is better for us to be together. Keiko couldn't, Ron said. She, it is okay, Mother interrupts. Keiko is not strong enough for this place. No, Ron says, Keiko wanted to come, but we thought it better if one of us was on the outside, just in case. I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm surprised that the whole family hasn't been asked to come, that if you're a student, you can still stay in school. Maybe it's because they are in a different state, a different place. I don't know. I'm curious about why Keiko and Ron didn't have to come but mother and father and grandfather and Manami did. It's interesting. I have to do some research to figure out why. Maybe some historical research would help me since the author isn't giving me a reason right now. My throat squeezes shut again, coated by red dirt turned to mud. My letters, one for Ron and one for Keiko, I thought they were lost. But there was a strong wind that day. Maybe that strong wind blew my letters into the sky all the way to Indiana. So now I know. Ron, Keiko are in Indiana. Maybe Indiana is not rounding up Japanese like they are on the West Coast. California and Washington. Maybe they're not doing it there and so that's why they didn't have to come. I'm thinking about this title, Paper Wishes, and it looks like there's a picture maybe of a dog there, but I'm wondering, paper wishes. She put a wish on that paper to Ron and another one to Keiko, please come. She didn't get to mail them, but she is saying that there was a strong wind and maybe that strong wind blew them all the way to Indiana. Do you think that could be true? I remember my message, please come. Not, please come and take me from this place. Not, please come and take me from this place to find Eugene. Not, please come and take, take me from this place to find Eugene and then return to the island. I began to understand even more. It is my fault that Eugene is alone on the mainland far from the island. It is my fault that grandfather has stopped laughing. And maybe it is even my fault that Ron is with us in this prison village far from college. That's the end of this chapter. Please look for the discussion questions underneath so that you can answer those. You don't have to turn them in, but answer those so that you're ready to share on Monday.